Hey gang, you're back with the Wilson Combat YouTube channel. My name is Masada Ayub. One of the things we do here is answer the questions that we get from you, the viewers. And one we've been getting repeatedly is, is it necessary to carry the semi-automatic pistol with a round in the chamber? The answer is only if you want to be fully prepared to survive with the thing. Remember, the defensive firearm is a reactive tool. And the assumption that you'll always be able to work, draw the pistol, have the other hand free to work the slide and come up in your Israeli shooting technique. Nice idea if nobody's got you by the arm, if nobody's broken your arm, or if the attack doesn't come from here where your body's going to come up like this and this hand's not going to get there in time. Before we dump on any technique, we have to understand where it came from and what its strengths are and what its weaknesses are. The empty chamber in the semi-automatic pistol goes back to the early days of the technology where none of those guns were drop safe. None of them had a dedicated passive uh, firing pin safety. And if the gun was dropped from any height, it could go off. When you're carrying that gun every day, the possibility of it being knocked to the ground or accidentally dropped probably exceeds the, the likelihood that you'll need to draw and immediately fire in self-defense on that particular day. For many years now, for decades now, we have had drop-safe handguns. And that means they're safe to carry, you can have a round in the chamber, you can drop them and you'll ding them up, but they're not going to go bang. Everyone says, well, the Israelis know a lot about combat and they taught empty chamber, draw, and rack slide like this. They did, but you have to go back. The country was formed in the late 1940s. They had a mishmash of whatever guns they could get from whatever country. Most, if not all of them, were not drop safe. And they needed one technique that would work with every one of those disparate different firearms. It's not the case today. These serious Israelis that we've visited with are carrying Glocks with live rounds in the chambers. The guns are drop safe, and those Israelis are ready to draw and fire reactively. If you look at the gunfight videos captured on surveillance and analyzed uh, elsewhere on YouTube by my friend John Correa, you'll see again and again and again people getting into trouble when they didn't have time to work the slide, or what often happens, you're in a compromised position under stress, the hands are shaking, and if you watch what happens here, as the hand comes up, when it's trembling, working the slide can create a little stutter effect that's gonna end up jamming the pistol. That's been known to happen again and again, and the outcome is never good for the individual who's trying to defend themselves. If the only gun I had was a, an old gun or a real cheap gun that was not drop safe. I would have to carry it with an empty chamber. It would be the only smart way to do it. Your precedent for that, look at the long guns that we have, the artillery of home defense or the police patrol car, as opposed to the infantry of the, the person who's mobile and the gun is on them all the time. From the AR-15 to the 870 shotgun and most everything else in between, those guns are not drop safe. That's why in the patrol car they're carried cruiser ready, full magazine in place but chamber empty. It's why if you're smart, your home defense gun will be, your long gun will be in the same condition. Magazine filled but empty chamber. And the round is chambered only when you anticipate immediate contact. If you're an AR-15 owner, the next time you've been shooting, remove your magazine, clear the live round out of the chamber, and if you haven't noticed already, you're going to find a little tiny dimple on the primer, just from that round having been cycled in. What do you suppose happens when that thing is dropped hard on the muzzle, struck hard on the butt, which causes the firing pin to bounce inside the firing pin channel? That's why those guns are kept chamber empty. With a modern service pistol that is drop safe, the wisest thing is to have a live round in the chamber. If you're new to the gun and concerned about an unintended discharge in the holster or something, carry the gun entirely unloaded for a week at home. 
and constantly check it and make sure, yep, the trigger hasn't pulled itself, yep, the hammer hasn't followed, yep, I haven't seen a click, I haven't heard a click that would have been a bang if the gun was loaded, and build your confidence. If that does not work, there's no reason not to get a revolver for self-defense. Any of your modern double action revolvers are drop safe and have been for, for decades. Yeah, you've only got five in this one versus 15 in this magazine for the semi-auto pistol. But the first shot is going to be a whole lot more important than the 15th. And if you're not comfortable with a round in the chamber and you want to carry a loaded handgun, I would strongly recommend the revolver. How often is it likely to be a one-handed event and this hand might not be able to come over and cycle? One of the best research tools that we've had for more than half century now is SOP9. The New York City Police Department introduced standard operating procedure number nine in the year 1970. It was a, an intensive review of every officer, every member of the service, as they called it, who had had to fire their gun in the line of duty. One of the questions was, did you fire one-handed or two? Now, since 1970, on NYPD training, uh, if you shoot a typical qualification, there were only six shots fired one-handed, and those will be fired at arm's length in retention position. Virtually all the training is two-hand isosceles, uh, what they call the turret stance. Yet, somewhere close to 50%, usually somewhere in the 40th percentile, the lowest I recall, 38%, of the actual shootings ended up being one-handed events. And again, it was because in real-world dynamics, instead of ready on the range, coach, when you had to turn toward your strong side to engage and this arm reflexively went out for balance, the subconscious realized the reinforcements don't have time to get there. We have to go with the troops on the ground. You need to carry a reactive weapon capable of being reacted to immedi with immediately with the one hand. There's a reason they call it handgun, not a hands gun. With the long guns, for the reasons I've stated, we need to keep them stored with empty chambers. It's not true of the defensive semi-automatic pistol. So the answer to the question is chambered. If you're not comfortable with chambered, revolver. Thanks for coming to the Wilson Combat Channel, and we'll look forward to seeing your responses and your commentary.